Would you go so far as Captain America went to rekindle an old flame? Stay tuned to find out what made his and other superhero movie kisses so memorable. In the 2002 movie Spider-Man, there are multiple times when Spider-Man saves Mary Jane Watson from danger. But it's the second of their encounters that made movie history. One rainy night in an alleyway, Mary Jane is accosted by a group of thugs. Spider-Man intervenes and easily incapacitates her assailants, but this time he decides to stay for a bit, talking to Mary Jane as he hangs upside down. MJ asks, Do I get to say thank you this time? Spidey stops her from removing his mask, not wanting to reveal his identity to her, so instead she opts to just pull the mask down a little bit, revealing his mouth. Peter Parker puckers up, and the two lock lips as our hero hangs upside down. The scene was an instant classic, becoming one of the most iconic kisses ever, not just in superhero movies, but in film generally. It's been parodied everywhere from Saturday Night Live to Shrek 2. Midway through X2, Xavier's mansion is raided by government agents and the X-Men are forced to flee. Wolverine, Rogue, Iceman, and Pyro decide to hide out in Iceman's childhood home, which leads to one of the most iconic moments from the original X-Men trilogy. Up until now, Rogue's mutant power has prevented the two from having a physical relationship. Whenever she touches someone, she drains them of their life force. A brief touch can cause them to lose consciousness, but a prolonged touch can be fatal. Additionally, whenever she does this to a mutant, she temporarily gains their powers. However, in this moment, Marie and Bobby decide to risk it, and they chance a brief kiss. They do so, and a moment later, as Rogue is pulling away, we learn that she's temporarily gained Iceman's ice control powers in the coolest way possible. As Rogue exhales, her breath is visible, like she's in a 90s dentine ice commercial. And it doesn't get more romantic than that. Throughout the 2004 film Hellboy, one of the major sources of conflict in the film is the love triangle between Hellboy, his pyrokinetic ex-girlfriend Liz, and Liz's new friend, FBI agent John Myers. Though the three bicker for much of the movie, in the end, our heroes set aside their differences to defeat the villainous Rasputin and save the day. However, after the battle, Hellboy and Myers discover that Liz has been killed. Hellboy kneels by her side and whispers something. A moment later, Liz miraculously awakens, returned to life. She asks Hellboy what he said to save her, and he replies that he said, Hey, you on the other side, let her go, because for her, I'll cross over. And then you'll be sorry. Liz smiles and kisses him, and as she does so, her pyrokinesis activates, bathing the couple in blue fire. Hellboy, being a demon, is unaffected. Seeing Hellboy reunite with his old flame is certainly a beautiful image to end the film on, but an unintentionally funny aspect of the scene is the fact that Myers is just stuck there the entire time, awkwardly watching his crush make out with her ex, surrounded by literal flames that symbolize their rekindled love. Ouch. Although they certainly have their ups and downs, without a doubt, one of our favorite superhero couples of all time is Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl, and they share a classic kiss towards the end of the first film. The family has just returned to the city after surviving a truly hellish ordeal on Syndrome's island. During their time there, Bob suffered a devastating emotional blow when he believed for a time that his family was killed by Syndrome's forces. Since reuniting, the Pars have been working together as a near-perfect superhero team, but the shadow of that moment still hangs over Bob. Before our heroes confront Syndrome, Mr. Incredible tries to convince the others that they should stay behind, offering the enigmatic explanation that he's not strong enough. At first, Helen starts to criticize Bob, and rightfully so. Bob keeping the rest of the family at arm's reach was what caused most of their problems in the first place. Bob then clarifies his statement, saying, I can't lose you again! I can't. Not again. I'm not strong enough. Helen kisses him, and after a few long seconds of lip lock says that if they work together, he won't have to be. No list of famous superhero movie kisses would be complete without a mention of 1997's Batman and Robin, which features the deadliest kisser in all of superhero fiction, Poison Ivy. See, in addition to her primary superpower and ability to control plants, Ivy also possesses the ability to kill people with deadly poison smooches. Throughout much of the film, Ivy is attempting to drive a wedge between Batman and Robin by seducing the latter. Midway through the story, it seems as if this has worked. Robin arrives in Ivy's lair and climbs into bed alongside her. He asks her what she's scheming, and she agrees to tell him in exchange for a kiss. 
A tense moment passes, but nothing happens. Ivy was clearly expecting Robin to drop dead, but he hasn't. Robin then peels off a set of fake rubber lips that he was wearing over his normal lips as protection against Ivy's toxins. It's a twist that's, like everything else in this movie, extremely silly and yet utterly delightful in its unapologetic campiness. Though the romantic relationship between Tony Stark and Pepper Potts eventually comes to be one of the central emotional anchors of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it takes a while before the couple actually has their first kiss. It isn't until the end of Iron Man 2 that Tony and Pepper finally get together. After narrowly escaping a frightening series of near-death experiences, the two regroup and catch their breath on a nearby rooftop, and in this moment, the silence between them finally breaks. Pepper confesses to Tony that being the CEO of Stark Industries is seriously stressing her out, and she wants to quit, but the revelations don't stop there. Hopped up on adrenaline and no longer keeping secrets from one another, the two lean in and begin to kiss. The shot is truly beautiful, mostly dark except for the twinkling city lights in the background and the underlighting on their faces from Tony's arc reactor. A moment this breathtaking was certainly worth the wait. The Guardians of the Galaxy films feature one of the best will-they-won't-they -they relationships of all time with Peter Quill and Gamora. Though the pair eventually do kiss in later films, none are as memorable as the time they don't actually kiss in the first film. During their escape from an interstellar prison, Peter risked his life to retrieve his Walkman. Later, the normally aloof and violent Gamora asks why this device is so important to him. Peter explains that it was a gift from his mother and that she instilled a love of music and dancing in him. He puts his headphones on Gamora's head to show her what he means and starts playing Elvin Bishop's Fooled Around and Fell in Love. Unable to resist, Gamora starts to sway. Peter takes her by the hand and leans in for a kiss. The moment their lips touch, Gamora instantly reverts to her old self, raising a knife to Peter's throat and saying, I know who you are, Peter Quill, and I am not some starry-eyed wave here to succumb to your, your pelvic sorcery. It's a beautifully constructed scene with a hilarious twist, and it ends with one of our favorite lines of dialogue in MCU history. Despite faking us out, this almost kiss is still one of the most memorable kisses ever. At the end of 2016's Deadpool, after the villain has been defeated and our hero has reunited with his lost love, Vanessa, there's still one more challenge that awaits him. Ever since the procedure that gave Deadpool his powers, but also covered his face in burn-like scars, he's wondered whether or not Vanessa would still be able to love him once she saw his face. Because of this, once Deadpool finally removes his mask, we see that he's taken some serious precautions. Stapled to his face is a magazine cutout of Hugh Jackman's face, with the eyes removed. Undeterred by Wade's lame attempt at humor, Vanessa removes the makeshift disguise and looks for the first time at Wade's true face. After a moment of contemplation, she tells him, After a brief adjustment period, and a bunch of drinks, it's a face I'd be happy to sit on. This is one film that truly has a happy ending. Among the many iconic images from the original comics that the Watchmen film faithfully recreates is one of the most memorable kisses in superhero history. No, we're not talking about the unnecessarily long and awkward love scene between Night Owl and Silk Spectre inside the Owl ship. We're talking about Night Owl's dream sequence that follows it. In this surreal vision, Night Owl and Silk Spectre are standing in a black void. They walk towards each other and begin to kiss. As they do so, an atomic bomb detonates in the background. And as the massive explosion approaches, the two continue to kiss, either not knowing what's coming or not caring. When the blast wave finally hits, they are instantly skeletonized, but they continue to hold each other as the world around them is engulfed in flame. It's just as stunning in the film as it is on the page. Going into Avengers Endgame, we weren't sure how things were going to turn out for our heroes, but it seemed like there was one thing we could say for certain. Steve Rogers had missed his one chance at love. Sure, Cap had managed to snag a couple of less than stellar kisses over the course of the franchise, like his undercover fake kiss with Black Widow and Winter Soldier, and his late kiss with Sharon Carter in Civil War, but the love of his life, Peggy Carter, was gone forever, having died of old age. However, when the team invents time travel as part of a plan to reverse Thanos' snap, death is suddenly no longer as big of an obstacle as it once seemed. And when the heroes have finally undone the snap and defeated Thanos for good, Steve decides he's earned a little me time, seven decades of it to be exact. He travels back into the past to be with Peggy Carter, and the last we see of them, they're dancing together at some unspecified point in the past. They lean in, their lips touch, and we cut to black. 
The moment is brief, and though we could have stood to see a little more, we get it. Steve and Peggy are an old-fashioned couple, and we can respect their privacy. Who would have guessed that after all the action, explosions, heartbreak, and death, Marvel's Infinity Saga would end with a beautiful kiss? Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite on-screen couples are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.